and this is Psalms 20 and verse 6. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed, he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. <clears throat> Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone where I learned this truth from peace and salutation to the brothers on down teaching, preaching, pushing, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. Really very windy here this morning and the usual noise workmen and what have you going on. Let's see if we can get through this. I've called the lesson, Behold His Right Arm or his right hand. I just want to get straight into the scriptures here because there's so many people, they're offended by the truth of this gospel and his right hand is an offense. They can't call his name. They're trying to ignore and find another way to go around. So let's get into some scriptures here. Let's go back to this. <coughs> Psalms 20, start at five. We will rejoice in the salvation and in the name of of our power. See, our power has a name. What is it? It's Yahweh, meaning he is, he is the existing one and his only begotten son that they can't say. They're cursed. They can't say the name. It's a terror in their mouth. His name is Yahweh Shai, meaning he's our savior, redeemer, high priest and mediator in the heavens. That's our power. We will rejoice in the salvation thy salvation in the name of our power we will set up our banners the lord fulfill all thy petitions now know i that the lord saveth his anointed he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of yahweh our power we're getting to a point now where the politeness, you know, worrying about the, what they call it, PC, political correctness. You can't speak for your right. I'm sure it's a scripture somewhere. I can't remember where that is. You've got to keep quiet, tiptoe around these people. They've got their idols that they worship and you have the truth and you can't speak for your truth. You've got to be worrying about what they think. They might get offended family members, uh, uh, friends, uh, people, you can't speak up because their voice is bigger than yours. Their cause, they think, is greater than yours. But the, the Most High is about to put his signature to some of what we're seeing happening around the world. I don't want to speak too much here, but the politeness and all the talking, as we say here, is soon done. Let's get into Let's get, we're going to be bouncing backwards and forwards through these scriptures here. Let's go uh, Matthew. I think we had first Matthew. Matthew 28, is it? Yes, yeah, 17 and 18. Referred to as the Great Commission. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Yahushai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. See, whether you like it or not, and it's all red letter, he says to them, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All the talking soon done. Deuteronomy 33. Let's start at one. And this is a blessing wherewith Moses, the man of the Most High, bless the children of Israel. That's who we're speaking about. They're calling us bywords of Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. They're dispersed. We're referred to as the diaspora. They're putting all kind of names on us. But we are those people. We're the people of the book, the children of Israel. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't change what is written. You are not the people. We are the people. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran. And he came with ten thousands of his saints. Who are the saints? Yeah, those same people again, the Hebrew Israelites. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. 
and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law. Who is speaking about? It's the children of Israel. It's not the whole world. No, it's the world, the cosmos, the children of Israel. And on this go round, it's the elect out of that house that has a chance of being saved. The inheritance. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 33, verse 4. Moses commanded us a law. Even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. See? Everyone trying to muscle in after they've done their dirt. They're trying to get away from the judgment that is coming their way. Psalms 98, they started one. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, his right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward who? Toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our power. His name is Yahweh. We're not embarrassed. We're not ashamed. You're not going to shout us down. Where are we going to go next? We're staying in Psalms. 78 started 52. But made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely so that they feared not but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to his mountain, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them and divided them an inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. This is an internal affair. It's private. See? Bastards over there in our land. The scriptures say a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. They're there right now. En masse claiming our inheritance. And they're jumping up and down, they're screaming and shouting. Any if you dare to say, Oh, it's not true. They start screaming and they turn their might of their sword to shut you up remove your privileges, have you bowed down, bent over, and all these so-called celebrities can't speak their right. We are Hebrew Israelites, and we're not going to be shout down. We have no investment in your madness. Habakkuk 3, let's go from 4 to 8. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. See this being repeated throughout the scriptures. Different timelines, time but it's the same thing that is being happening. Let's read a few more verses. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Habakkuk is seeing this vision. He's, he's petrified. What's he looking at? He's saying, what is, is the most high? Angry against his own rivers was thine anger against the rivers. Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thine chariots of salvation? This is the question he's asking. The terror that Habakkuk is seeing. Let's go back up here and read verse 2 of Habakkuk 3. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. That's the fear that's been put into the hopeful elect. When I consider some of these things, I'm just absolutely petrified at what is coming. You feel like you're there. It's so terrible what is about to happen. People can't see they're going about their business and they turn their back on this truth. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. He's begging, please, please. And we'll see later on in the scripture. 
This is repeated again by another one of these prophets saying identical thing. It's all the same being repeated over and over. Isaiah 59 and verses 16 and 17. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. It sustained him for he put on righteousness as a burst plate and an helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with a zeal as a cloak is coming with almighty power oh, power his name is one of his titles the king of terrors and my god is it going to be terrible one of those songs i listen to say it i got terrible and i did gideon uh, 62, we're staying in Isaiah 62 and 8 and 9. And the Lord has sworn by who? By his right hand. You should know who that is by now. It's Yahweh Shai, our king. And by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for the which thou hast labored. See, they've been benefiting. Who is that Edomite? We can't go through a lesson without identifying who our oppressor is. He wants you to call him white. He's a liar, deceiver. It's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And he's been benefiting from our labor. And he takes no account of it. This is saying here, what you've labored for, you're going to get it for yourself. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. whose name is Yahweh. We know the names. We're not afraid of his name. We're not afraid to say his name. My God, we are afraid of the power that is Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And they that have bought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. He was going to stay here because who are we speaking about? Let's just turn the page. Isaiah 63, from 1 to 4. Who is this that cometh from Edom? It's that white man again, the Edomite. We know who you are. You've been identified in this last time with dyed garments from Bosra. Where's that? That's the capital of his wickedness. America, Babylon the Great. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? This is synonymous of all the blood. Our power is going to be doing a lot of killing. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine vat. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Killing, killing, killing. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Re meaning back, D meaning to purchase. It recompense is coming, you're gonna get it. All these other 17 nations headed up by this white man, the Edomite, they've all benefited from our downtrodden state, and so they're just getting ready to receive judgment. There's no escape. We're going to be beating this dead horse, so to speak, right through this lesson, 1 Corinthians 1. <clears throat> or did we miss one here? I can't remember if we was going to look at another one in Isaiah. Isaiah 63, I think 11 and 12 had something here. Where are we? Then he remembered the days of old and his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name? Who was that in the chariot that was above them? Who is it? 1 Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not, starting at one, would not have ye should be, that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. 
for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And who was that rock? That rock was the anointed. Hamashiach. It's Yahweh Shai who was in that place, <coughs> parting that Red Sea. So the scripture here is saying, I don't want you to be ignorant. You must know this. Don't mistake, because he's not going to give his power to another. Acts 5 and 31, what does that say? Him hath the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to who? To his, to Israel, and forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. That's who we are. We are those people. Ephesians 1, starting at 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Who are the saints? It's those people again, Hebrew Israelites. Psalms 50 and 5 and 78 and 5 on down and 148, 149. It's all, it's everywhere. We are the people, we are the saints. We are his servants. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in the anointed, when he raised him from the dead and set him where? At his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That's our power. We're talking about behold the right arm or the right hand of our power. We're not ashamed. Can't say the name. Why can't you say the name? The compromise, the name is terrible in your mouth. Hebrews 1 verse 1, the most high who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last times spoken unto us by who? By his son, his name is Yahweh Shai, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person it's not the same person these are two separate powers and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins who can sin what is sin it's transgression of the law well who was given the law it's those people again it's the hebrew israelites Psalms 147 19 and 20 the other nations were not given this law, so they technically cannot sin. They function outside of this law. There's a contract, covenant, a blood oath that was between our power and us. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. He being made so much better than the angel, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Let's look at eight. Hebrews 8, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not a man. Hebrews 10, starting at 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for his sins forever, sat down on the right hand of the Most High, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. That's recorded in Psalms. For by one, I think it's 110, for by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins 
and iniquities will I remember no more. This is an intimate setting, nothing to do with anybody else. Whereas we're going to go next, Wisdom of Solomon 5, starting at I think it's 15. But the righteous live forevermore, their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them and with his arm shall he protect them. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. Some people say, well, you don't need to worry about all those things you're speaking of because the Most High is going to deal with it. Well, who is he going to use? This is saying he's going to make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies, he shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of an helmet. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. His severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts. What's this speaking about? Don't like those missiles. Intercontinental ballistic missile. It's nuclear war. It's on the way. They're sharpening up. They're readying up. They're spending all the money that they have. The scripture says, just forget about the plowshares and pruning hooks and all this. Forget all of your economy. Just put all your money for war because I'm coming to get you. Go abroad and from the clouds as from a well-drawn bow shall they fly to the mark. And the hailstones full of wrath shall be cast as out of a stone bow, and the water of the sea shall rage against them, and the flood shall cruelly drown them. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them. What type of wind is this? It's nuclear wind. It's war. It's coming. It's coming. And like a storm shall blow them away. Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, until ill-dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. But that's said before. It are got terrible. Got another one here, Second Ezra 16. It started 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. What type of arrows can this be when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world? Where's the end of the world? It's America, Babylon the Great. It's going to be fire, stubble, rubble. It's the headquarters of these white people, the Edomite. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundations of the earth like as an arrow. What type of arrow can cause all this? Which is shut out of the mighty archer returneth not backward. Even so, the plague that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me. Estrus is looking into the future. He's seeing all this. He's, Estrus is here now. He's saying, well, oh my God, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and of power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Evils meaning bad times. It's going to be so bad. Behold, famine and plague and ter tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment but for all these things they shall not turn from their wickedness nor be always mindful of the scourges and look this is we're right here now behold victual shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in a good case even then shall evils grow upon the earth sword famine and great confusion for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine and other that escape the hunger shall the sword, so even the sword is going to get you even those who miss out from dying of famine and starvation which by the way is one of the worst ways to go your body does shut down shut down organ by organ it's just one of the most terrible ways to go starvation and hunger and this is saying even those that miss out and perish of famine and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy you're going to be begging to be killed and the dead shall be cast out as dung shit, so you understand. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the cities shall be cast down. And it just goes on. To this second address. This is just kind of labeling out and listing how terrible it's going to be. The same thing said over and over. And yet people can't see 
that judgment is coming. Let's finish up with these two verses here in Matthew 25, 33 and 34. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. This is red letter, Yahweh Shai speaking. But the goats, that's these other nations headed up by the Edomite, the white man, the devil that is listed in the scripture. That's the wicked, the serpent, the dragon. He's the deceiver, liar. He's running up and down the earth. He's just murdered. He's destroyed the whole earth with his plagues, his pestilence. He's the most high sword. That's all he does. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Let's say Hebrew Israelites. But the goats on the left. Verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Kal halal Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Hashem Rakwa Kadash. All praises to our power. You've been listening to Behold His Right Arm. Shalom until the next one.